Hi there, I'm Christine, the Gemini Stitcher, and welcome to my sewing shack. It's starting to get a bit untidy in here, so today I am going to tidy it up because I am determined to keep on top of it after my mega tidy the other week. So, how are we all? I hope you've had a lovely sewing week. My week has been amazing last week. But before I go into that, I have had requests from people to say what I am wearing in my videos, so it's not me being vain. You guys apparently want to know. So today, a bit chilly in Lancashire, I've got a Tilly and the Buttons pearl wrap cardigan on in a beautiful dopamine mustardy yellow French cherry with dandelion heads all over it i got this wonderful fabric from flamingo fabrics last year so chances are they won't have any but they've got some amazing french cherries in at the moment and sweats coming up for winter so if you're planning your winter wardrobe have a look at flamingo you'll find something different because they also do their own print on demand designs as well amazing and I've teamed it up. I've got a white Rio Ringer t shirt, just a plain t shirt to add an extra layer because it really isn't very warm. And I've teamed it up with some black Philippa trousers. Can't remember the designer, but I'll put it at the bottom when I've had a check. They're a really good fit, these trousers. They're in like a moleskin black fabric, very soft. And I'm not sure whether you're going to see. Let's just whiz down a bit. It has, there we go, a button fly. So if you're not keen on zips but you're okay with buttons, have a go at the Philippi pants. I love the fit, really do. And when I've checked what size I've made, because I've had these a while, I'll pop that down below as well. So that's my outfit so before we get into the nitty-gritty of what i've been making and what i'm planning to make i have not forgotten that i'm doing a draw for the 20 pounds fold line voucher they're all in this fishbowl there's more than the looks i think there's about 40 odd people responded so I will be drawing this at the end of the vlog. So bear with me and you'll find out who's won the voucher. What have I made this week or last week? I do this every time, don't I? What did I make last week? Well, you may all know because I've been banging on about it for ages. It was the first sewing social event at the Millhouse venue in Clayton Labors. So I was a bit busy sorting that out and going on the Wednesday and having a fabulous day. But I have managed to get some sewing done. Not bad, actually, because one of them was, you know, a bit of a meaty garment for me. The first thing I made, I'm fessing up now because it was a bit of a failure. The hubster wanted a bucket hat. So I purchased a pattern got it for the two dollars and here it is looks great doesn't it made it a lovely soft mole skinny type fabric and then i'll turn it inside out cute stripy dolphin fabric on the inside so I got it to this stage and then before he wanted, um, he called him, can you put some of them holes in it? Grommets is what he meant, girls. And um, before I battled, because I do battle with things like that, even though I have got the Primvario players. So if anybody knows of a better way of doing it, let me know. Or a better gadget than the Vario players. <coughs> Pardon me, losing my voice. Really pleased with it. Bobbed back in the house to say, right, just try this on for size. I'd measured his head and everything. 
Are you ready for this? It is Mahusu. <laughs> now, not quite as big on him, but OMG. Too big. Gutted, I was. So I'm going to get the free bucket pattern that a few vloggers have been using. I'll pop the details below for it. The baker that sells the lovely Liz has made a few of these up for their hauls. And she said on there that she on her last vlog that she made up an age 12. So obviously these guys who make these patterns are making them huge. So I will try again with the other pattern. Whether I'm making an age 12 or not, I don't know. I think I will make an age 12 and I'll try it on and then we'll take it from there. But I'm desperate to make some of these. So if you know of a good pattern, let me know. The only other thing that I made this week, I'm leaning on it here. Keep touching it. So I absolutely in love with this fabric. I took this to the sewing social to make. Didn't finish it, obviously, because there's a lot of work involved, but I have managed to finish it this week. And here it is. It is the Roxy shirt from Style Art Patterns. And I'll go through a few of the details with you. It has a collar with, if you can see, oh yeah, there, a collar stand which was a new one on me. A lot of the colours I make don't have a colour stand, so that was a good one to learn. Long sleeves with cuffs on. Two front pockets. And one of them, I've put one of my I'm the Zest cheeky labels on. Thought I fancied a label on the outside of my pocket. The back doesn't have a yoke, so if you're worried or scared of doing the burrito method, try this one. It doesn't have a back yoke, so it makes it easier. And then at the bottom, it has a split at the back. Now, what would I say about this that was hard? Not a lot, just the collar stand really, but take your time. I ended up, when you're doing the collar stand, it tells you to sandwich the collar in between it, just pin it and sew it. Now it started moving around with me, I've got to be honest, when I was doing that, so I tacked it together, but that's just me. Belt and braces. So, what else do I want to tell you about it? Oh, the buttons. I even managed to get some fabulous sparkly buttons. How gorgeous are they in a bright green? I got them on Etsy. And again, I'll check the shop details and put it down below. They came really quickly. And I think I paid about £4 for 10 buttons. And they're gorgeous. Now, I made this. I put it on the hanger with my apple green sepia pants because I made it to go with those. As an over jacket or an over shirt, sorry. And it works really well. I'll pop some pics up of me wearing this combo together. And then in the winter, I'm going to wear it tucked in as a normal shirt with a pair of black trousers. I'll just grab the fabric that I need to make them because I ain't made them yet. Hang on a sec. This is the fabric. It's a black leopard print jacquard. I'll try and get close enough so that you can see the pattern. Oh yeah, you can see it there. Can you see? It's got a lovely jacquard pattern on it in leopard print. So I'm guessing this is like, it's a reasonable weight fabric for some floaty evening type winter trousers to team up 
hang on hope you can get the idea with this but the top will be tucked in as a blouse so i'm hopefully going to get a lot of wear out of that shirt because the fabric was not cheap by any stretch it was 19 pounds a meter from minerva i know to be fair it only took a meter and a half being a midget so not too bad really and what i then thought was and what i might start trying to do a little bit more often is try and compare it to a garment in the shops off the peg ready-made whatever you want to call it so i had a look on the ever reliable marks and spencers because i thought i don't want anything cheap because this is really expensive fabric and to be honest i'd struggled to find anything quite so stunning but they did have a let their version of a leopard print overshirt there it is they're selling that for 35 pounds this cost me 29 pounds not including the pattern because i'm not including patterns because i use them again so this cost me 29 that's 35 personally i'd have this one every time i searched high and low to try and find something that was quite so bright and beautiful not out there so i'm obviously not on trend with my colors but hey i choose the colors that i love so that's my comparison of the garment that i've made this week and let me know which one would you prefer mine or the mns brand be interesting to see so that actually is this week's question which shirt would you choose the style art roxy or the Marks and Spencers overshirt. Interesting to see the answers to that one. And that is all I've made this week because, as I said, I've been busy sorting out my social sewing. So let's talk about that next, shall we? It was amazing. Amazing. Thank you to everybody who came. There were 10 of us all together, including me and Sharon, my bestie, who runs the Mill House venue and kindly let us use it for our social sewing event. So there were eight ladies booked on the first ever event, which was phenomenal because we were convinced, Sharon and I, that there's just going to be me and her, our sewing machines, a plate of sandwiches, and a bottle of wine to drown our sorrows on Wednesday. But no, eight people booked on. They turned up. They all loved it. Well, they said they did, so I hope they meant it. They actually must have done, because I think at the moment there are five, maybe six, already booked on to the next event, which is fab. The next one's going to be on the 6th of September at the Millhouse venue, Clayton Lamores. So if you're interested, then email, I'll pop it at the bottom, events at the millhousevenue.com and they will send you out full details and how to book. So I will pop some pics of me and the girls who came at the end. So if you want to see what we got up to, hang around till the end. So that's all my makes. And what I did last week. <gasps> no, there's something else that I forgot to tell you about. Oh my goodness, how could I forget? Wednesday was the most amazing day, obviously, because it was the sewing social. And when I got home, shattered, obviously, could hardly talk because I'd been guessing all day. Came home, checked 
my emails and stuff because I hadn't checked any social media all day. Too busy. So I thought, right, get myself a brew, sit down, check what's been going on on the socials. Checking through my emails, oh, I jumped up and screamed with excitement. A few weeks ago, Flamingo Fabrics, Flamingo Fabrics, put a post up on Instagram wanting people to apply to be one of their ambassadors. Now, I've applied to Minerva when they've put their ambassadorships up. Oh, I've lost count of the number of times and never been successful. So I just thought I was in two minds whether to bother and I thought, no, I do like the fabrics that Flamingo do. So I'm going to apply. And I did. And guess what? I'm in the Flamingo flock. Yes. Oh, my God. I just can't tell you how much it means to me to be have my sewing and my skills recognised by a fabric company. I can't tell you how much it means to me. You can see, I'm filling up. Crazy. But you guys will probably relate to it more than anybody else. We all sit in our little sewing rooms. Mine's a sewing shack. We make our own garments. We wear them. Occasionally somebody says, that's nice. Where did you get that from? And that's great. Well, that's it, isn't it? So... To be recognised by a fabric company is brilliant. It's beyond belief. So I'm part of the Flamingo flock. Get that. I've joined the group and the plan is that they're going to put in the group different projects that they want people to make. We've got to come up with our own ideas and the ones that they like the best will get to create their creations in flamingo fabrics can't wait it's going to be such fun we've all been chatting i think there's about 15 people in the flock and we've all been chatting within the group already and that's amazing so as well as creating things and making new sewing friends what could be better okay let's calm down I've gone through what I made last week, a shirt and a big bucket hat. So what are my plans for this week? I haven't got a busy week, so I should get a little bit more sewing done. Fingers crossed. Let's have a think. What am I going to make? Oh, actually, there's something else that I started making here that I've not told you about. Apologies. If anybody follows Adam from Adam Sews, or if you don't do, because he makes the most amazing bags and all sorts of things out of Tula Pink fabrics. And if you've not seen Tula Pink fabrics, go and have a look at them. Google them. The designs are phenomenal. So... Adam makes these. The catch caddy. And I'll try and get up close enough for you to see. It's basically a hold all for all your notions, etc., that you use in your sewing room. Well, not just your sewing room, any sort of craft holder. It's a craft holder. There we go. And it's called the catch all caddy. And I'm going to try and make my own. It's a big ask because I'm a garment maker, not a crafter at heart. I do do a little bit of crafting, but I've never made anything quite as complicated as this. I've made a start. Look at that fabric. <laughs> Absolutely, totally in love with it. So that's the outside. And that's the fabric that I've put on the inside. I've done some quilting, grid quilting. And so that's the main fabric outside and the inside. 
and then because you need to show you a few different fabrics to get the effect i've then got this fabric this isn't a tula pink i can't remember what it is but to go with it so what do we think i think they're going to go really well together so that is on the go don't know how long it's going to take me to make it i'd love to say well it is in me make some plans for this week which is why i forgot to show you it as one of last week's it is in me make some plans for this week i'm not guaranteeing that i'm going to get it finished um i've ordered some stripe pink and black stripe fabric for the binding and the handle so if that arrives maybe so i'll get to the point where i need to start doing the binding and then i come to a standstill till that arrives so that might be as far as i get this week but it's a slow make a considered make for me because if i rush my accuracy goes out of the window and you can't do that with this so fingers crossed i'll be able to make my own catch caddy i am definitely absolutely making up the avenir jumpsuit this week i keep mentioning it and not doing it but this week is the week that i'm going to get this baby made this is the fabric that i'm going to be making it in i got it from joe row rags a few weeks back and i go away at the end of september i know we've got a lot of miserable weather in the uk but this will at least get worn on my holidays apparently we are due some more, another hot spell so if i get that made up this week it's all ready for when the sun comes out isn't it so have i bought anything else this week oh i certainly have i've been looking at a crossbody bag i wanted one not a really long one one that stays you can have at the front or the back and comes to about here I didn't want one of the ones that looked like a bum bag or a fanny bag. I wanted a nice bag. And I found it. But the fold line had sold out of the pattern. Late to the party again. It's my middle name. But I found a way that I can get hold of it. And I have. Shall I show you? I need to fess up it wasn't my idea to do this and get this pattern in this way i watched tamlin sewn on the time all of watching her she's so enthusiastic so if you don't watch her give her a watch i'm sure you all do already and in her last vlog she showed something that she'd bought from little miss so-and-so and it was the bag that i'd been drooling over and it's the Noodleheads Harl Harrelson crossbody bag. And that's it. You can wear it at the front or the back. And they were selling it, or they still are, are, are selling it as a kit with everything in, which I thought was even better. I ain't got to search around on Amazon, which is my favourite shop for bits and bots. To find everything it was all coming together so i have shamelessly copied tamlin with the main outer fabric because i absolutely loved it when she showed it last week so that's the fabric that i'm using on the outside but she did she got some stingray fabric for the inside beautiful fabric but i thought no it's taking it too far copying that as well so i've picked this pop of color for the lining all just together aren't they so they're going to be the harlison bag harrelson bag saying it wrong now in the kit you also get the piece of pleather which i'm assuming did you hear that then it's my notions dropping on the floor. So we're saying you get a piece of leather, which I'm 
guessing. Well, I know it's to be able to do this unusual fastening. So that's going to be interesting. What else do we get? We get the matching thread. Strap. Keep dropping things. Hang on a little sec. A couple of zips. One for the outside and one for an inside pocket. You also get some firm interfacing to give the bag a decent amount of body, which is great. And then this little bag has got all the notions in. So you get... Let's... I'll tip everything out and then I'll lose it now. But we'll go through it. So I've got two large claw clasps. That will be for the strap. You get your sl adjustable slider. Some different sized E-rings. And a smaller clasp. That might be for something for the inside. We'll see. Oh, it might, that might be for the front fastening. Maybe. And that's it. So I've got them all in the kit. Now, this kit's brilliant. You can buy it. Sorry, I'm looking away from you. You can buy it with or without the pattern. So if I want to make another one, and again, I don't want to search around for all the bits and bobs, I can buy it again. Well, obviously, get it a bit cheaper because I'm not having to buy the pattern. I've already got it. So, love that. Love that idea. Made up. So, that might be on the list to do this week as well. Because if I get to a point with a catch caddy and I'm waiting for the binding fabric, then I might make a start on this. Yeah? I've got a week of sewing virtually. I've got nowhere else to go. I've got a nail appointment in the week and I've got lunch with a lady who, have not, who we used to deal with through work and I've not seen for ever such a long time. So I'm going meeting up for lunch with Carol on Thursday, which is going to be lovely. But apart from that and the gym, I've got to fit the gym in. I've no other plans. So it's a sewing week this week. So hopefully I will get all of those things done. Well, I've made a start on them. I'll get the two garments done and I'll have made a start on the two crafty projects. So that's it for this week. I hope you found it interesting. If you're new, if you've only just found me, then give me a like, subscribe to my channel. It helps me grow and I really, really appreciate it. There's just one last thing to do and explain why I've started giving small channel shout outs i know i'm only a small channel myself but some of my subscribers did say that when we're doing the busy bee challenge um they're getting to see other channels through the six of six vloggers who are doing that that they have never seen before and i thought yes it's because we're small and insignificant in the huge world of YouTube. So every week I am shouting out a small channel in the hope that you guys get to see a bit more variety in your sewing channels, which is great because we love the big guys, love them. But it's nice to have a bit of variety, isn't it? And that way you get to see loads more fabric, loads more pattern ideas. And a new person to listen to and watch while you're doing your sewing in your sewing room. Because that's when I do my YouTube sewing vlogs watching time is when I'm sewing something. And it's company. So where do you do your sewing channel watches? Viewing watches. Viewing. Is it in your sewing room? Is it at night time? Is it first thing in the morning? Is it in your lunch break? That's another interesting question. Let me know where you, do, where you watch me. 
So this week's sewing shout out channel is a channel called Sewing in Switzerland. Now this lady is lovely. She has a gorgeous pug dogs on the vlogs with her and she has some wonderful ideas and some in-depth research as well. Now if you watched my Joe dress review this lady has done a vlog about apparently there has been a bit of hoo-ha about the Joe dress being a copy of a famous designer's dress. So if you want to find out more about that go and watch Sewing in Switzerland and see what she has to say about it and what she's found out. So that's this week's small channel shout out and what I'm going to do is also ask the lovely lady at Sewing in Switzerland if she would not mind giving my channel a shout out on her next vlog because that's how we get ourselves out there isn't it so please that would be lovely and when you do and what I'm going to do on this vlog is I'm setting up the hashtag which is hashtag small sewing channel and every time I shout out a small sewing channel I will be hashtagging it so that you can go to it find out you'll see me all of my vlogs because i'm a small sewing channel and if you've got a small sewing channel which i'm sort of classing about 2000 and less subscribers use the hashtag a small sewing channel and then people can use that hashtag to find all the small sewing channels on youtube and get a bit more variety in their viewing so We'll see if that works. It's draw time. So here we go. Let's give them all a really good shake and a good luck to everybody. I appreciate all of you, but only one of you can win. So let's see who it's going to be. Get all a really good swish around. And here we go. This is the lucky winner. Estelle 7061. So, Estelle, let me have your email address. Or better still, email me. I will put the details of my email address in the comments and the winner. Email me with the details of your email address, and then I can get you your voucher to you. Well done, Estelle. So that's everything for this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I've given you some inspiration to get your sojo going for this week. As you can see, the sewing shack's in a bit of a state, so I'm going to spend the rest of the day tidying before I get down to the nitty gritty of my sewing for next week. So take care, happy sewing, and I will see you all on Thursday for another update. This Thursday is going to be what I made in July and what I'm planning to make for August. So stay tuned, happy sewing, and see you soon. Bye!